Oh hi, I'm the Heretic. Just before I start this video, I should mention that the 500 subscribers special deadline to get your scripts to me ends on the 7th of May this Sunday. See my 500 subscriber video for more details, but if you haven't started yet, get cracking. So Nightmare Fuel, you might have heard of him, he's the skeptic who flirted with an underage girl on Twitter. He's an anti-theist with nearly 10,000 subs, so he's kind of important. But it's very interesting being an anti-theist. I can understand the agnostic or even the atheist argument in regards to lack of empirical evidence for God's existence, but anti-theism requires you not only to prove a negative, but to oppose that which doesn't exist. Which is highly irrational of you if you don't mind me saying. I hate unicorns too. Uh. Now, uh, that has nothing to do with this video, but it does make you wonder. If he's this irrational on religion, to which there is no shortage of rational arguments made by people much smarter than either of us, good lord, what's he gonna say about guns? Let's find out. Hit it! We've been on a bad trajectory for quite a while. Horrendous mass shooting after horrendous mass shooting, with very little commentary from our public officials other than thoughts and prayers. What are you talking about? You can't get them to shut up about it. The best Do you know what a barrel shot is? Particular time. I actually don't know what a barrel oh, shot is. Okay, I think it's, in it's your a legislation. shoulder thing that goes up. This is crazy. You can't certainly use this for hunting. But some of these bullets, as you saw, have an incendiary device on the tip of it, which is a heat-seeking device. Those that hold over 10 rounds. We have federal regulations and state laws that prohibit hunting ducks with more than three rounds. And yet, it's legal to hunt humans. Bullets. So the people who have those now, they're going to shoot them. And so if you ban, if you ban them in the future, the number of these high-capacity magazines is going to decrease dramatically over time because the bullets will have been shot and there won't be any more available. Those who support the bill say even an unloaded gun is still dangerous. There's been a lot of people that have been shot by an unloaded gun. I feel the frustration of gun reform movements. I truly do. They're coming from a good place. They're exploiting emotions to deprive people of their property rights. Gun control, that is to say gun restriction, is simply using the violence of a coercive monopoly to determine what people can and cannot voluntarily exchange. There's no good place here. My rights don't care about your good intentions. Now, that being said, I believe the gun problem is wildly overinflated and sensationalized at that. Progressives will swarm high-profile shootings like ants on a picnic while ignoring the majority of gun-related deaths. Then they aren't coming from a good place, are they? I also don't agree with outright banning the AR-15. They're like any other shady lobby, just with a deadly sense of dogmatism and no social grace. Uh, I think you're talking about two different things here. I want to acknowledge the heroism and bravery of Blaine Gaskill, the Maryland school resource officer who stopped the mass shooter in his tracks and saved the lives of every innocent kid in that school. To all the kids from Parkland getting ready to use your First Amendment to attack everyone else's Second Amendment at your march on Saturday, I wish a hero like Blaine had been at Marjorie Douglas High School last month because your classmates would still be alive and no one would know your names because the media would have completely and utterly ignored your story the way they ignored his. <laughs> oh damn, that's throwing it down. Can't even argue with that, can you? Allow me to explain my position. My gun safety measures are not a response to any particular shooting. I'm aware shootings will continue to happen, especially in a country littered with firearms. You're already being disingenuous. Saying shootings will happen in a country littered with firearms implies causality, that shootings are a result of there being a lot of firearms. It's not. Here's a graph of gun homicides per million guns. Keep in mind, homicide doesn't necessarily mean criminal shooting, and different countries track homicide differently. It could mean self-defense. It could mean suicide. Gee, it doesn't look like our very high gun quantity has much to do with the homicide rate. These are policies I would like to see implemented and or maintained at a federal level. So you want to impose your will on your fellow Americans by getting men with guns 
to force people against their will to do what you want them to do. But that's okay because you call it legislation and policy. Gotcha. Mandatory licensing. Because the government doesn't collect enough information on people who aren't breaking any laws, I guess. Really, though, this is a huge can of worms you don't want opened. Or maybe you do. First off, how will we get these licenses? How much will it cost to get a license? Who gets to determine the criteria for getting a license? Will these licenses cover handguns, rifles, both, or what? If I already own a weapon, do I need to get a license? Who will be trained to determine who can and cannot get a license? How will they be trained? What makes you think you're justified in stopping me from owning certain types of property because I can and cannot get your stupid worthless piece of paper? Secondly, and most importantly, whose life could have been saved by gun licenses? I'll give you a hint. None! Mandatory mental health evaluation. This means nothing. They're evaluating my mental health for the sake of evaluating my mental health, and good job! You're wasting everybody's time and money. But clearly you're doing this to see who's mentally fit enough to own a firearm. According to whose criteria? Yours? How do we know who's mentally fit enough to own a firearm? Are schizophrenics allowed to own firearms? What about autistic lizards? Are climate change skeptics mentally ill? But don't worry, this evaluation won't be politicized at all. We promise. Waiting period of at least 48 hours. What purpose do waiting periods serve at all? Preventing people from buying guns in the heat of the moment? Right, because nobody's ever murdered anyone else with a household item or with their bare hands. I need a damn good reason before I let you determine how long I have to wait before I can buy something, let alone impose that upon me through a coercive monopoly. National Registry You're giving the government, this violent organization with a geographical monopoly on violence, the information on people who haven't broken any laws. The hell is wrong with you. If you don't see the problem with this, I'll spell it out. Republicans are more likely than Democrats to own firearms in the U.S. Now, why does this matter? After all, aren't both parties awful? They are, but if the Democrats ever get power and they want to win future elections, they can reliably use Nightmare Fuel's precious database to target and harass gun owners, a group that's likely to not vote Democrat. In the early 2010s, the IRS was weaponized against conservative nonprofit organizations. So yes, absolutely, the institutions of the state will be weaponized against political opponents. Gun owners will be targets for increased jury summons, audits, property inspections, and appraisals. Make no mistake, this database makes all gun owners potential targets for future statist harassment. For what? I'll ask this again, Nightmare Fuel. Name one life that could have been saved by this database. Just one. And the minimum age raised to 21 years old. You know what? We can make a deal. You can raise the gun age to 21 if you raise the voting age to 21. No? Can't do that? Then stop using coercive monopolies to restrict what people can buy, asshole. I think these ideas could make America safer and simultaneously improve the reputation of gun owners. The state wants power. The more power the state has, the more ability the priests of statism have to enrich themselves with other people's stolen money. The reason gun owners have such a bad reputation has nothing to do with gun owners and everything to do with the hostile government media complex. They want to make gun owners look crazy. So the statist agenda of gun restriction is more palatable. Now why does the state want gun restrictions? Because an unarmed population is unable to defend itself when they start arresting people for Nazi pug videos and start starving toddlers to death. In terms of making America safer, it won't. Want to be safe? Don't live in a major metropolitan area. That's where all the crime is concentrated. Simple. Nightmare fuel, be honest. You're not an anti-theist. Your religion is statism. I support my fellow Americans owning firearms. I only want them to be responsible and accountable. Accountable to whom? Their fellow Americans? We got that covered. Accountable to almighty government? No. Go away. You have a rifle on your avatar, but I suspect you've never met a gun owner in person. 
I don't want to see the Second Amendment be abolished, and when former Supreme Court justices are suggesting just that, I can understand concerns raised over talk of gun control. Huh, I guess our leaders are talking about it after all. I would simply tell gun owners that a little compromise here and there is not a bad thing. Clinging to your weapons so adamantly is a very bad look. Bob wants to kill Steve. Steve wants to not be killed. How can they compromise? Don't get me wrong, compromise is a wonderful thing, but you can't compromise with property rights. You either have it or you don't. If you try to restrict a little bit of it, then you can't not justify being able to restrict all of it consistently. However, whether in part or in totality, the restriction of property rights cannot be justified. Such restriction implies you have control over another person's actions, which means you own them, which makes them your slave, which is bad. I will stand by you and defend your constitutional rights. In return, I only ask for a little accountability. Again, accountable to who? The state? The same state that launched 100 missiles into Styria based on a chemical attack that didn't happen? The same state whose inquisitors murdered David Shaver in cold blood? The same state that's killed millions of Iraqis and destabilized an entire region of the world? And I could go on all day. Point is, I don't want to be accountable to them. With friends like these, who needs enemies? If you supporting us is dependent on us agreeing to be controlled by a coercive monopoly, then I don't want your support. Guns are cool. I get it. Guns are useful. Guns are also extremely dangerous, and we as a culture need to treat them with the weight they deserve. Yep, you've definitely never met a gun owner. They take firearms and firearm safety very seriously and understand fully the power of these beautiful machines. Uh, is the video over? Oh lord, it's another 20-something seconds of black screen. What the hell happened? I mean, we all make mistakes, but still. Well, let me just make my own position clear. I believe in property rights consistently. Provided you have the means, and the non-aggression principle is followed, you should be able to own whatever property you wish. You don't need some government busybody bureaucrats telling you what you can and cannot own. Saying the government needs to do something is saying men with guns need to coerce people into doing your bidding. I always find it amusing that every time the topic of gun restrictions comes up, Nobody says anything about restricting almighty government's access to guns. Because it's not about gun control, it's about gun monopolization. And people like Nightmare Fuel are useful idiots in the statist's crusade to return the government to its equilibrium, totalitarianism. Truth is, I have more respect for people who want gun confiscation because at least they're somewhat consistent. These people who preach moderation and compromise are the worst. In the name of being sensible, they demand you surrender your property rights piecemeal, implying that applying natural law consistently and recognizing property rights as absolute is somehow radical or extremist. It's not. And even if you do have your way, Nightmare Fuel, even if you get everything you want, it still won't save lives. It won't improve the reputation of gun owners because it won't be enough. There's going to be another psycho that the FBI may or may not put up to a mass shooting, and there's going to be calls for yet more restrictions. There's going to be more compromises we're going to be asked to make. Until we're London, where the violent crime rate is skyrocketing, and the priests of statism are unironically calling for knife control. Now, do I think Nightmare Fuel is lying in this video? Of course not. He's not smart enough to. Nor is he smart enough to recognize that his own blind faith in the dogma that getting a coercive monopoly involved somehow solves a problem. And he has the audacity to call himself an anti-theist. A disarmed society is a society of hate speech laws and judges murdering toddlers because they dislike the family's attorney. No thanks. I'll keep clinging to my guns. Questions? Comments? Critique? Is this the dumbest thing Nightmare Fuel has ever said? What does it say about him that the top featured channel on his channel is Atheism is Unstoppable? Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.